Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're going to create a sort of cut line effect in Adobe Photoshop and this is all going to be done in Photoshop and the scissors are coming in as a shape. So we're going to start with a document. I'm just going to make mine 1000 pixels by 1000 pixels but you can make yours as small or as large as you like. I'm going to show the layers palette so that we can keep an eye on what we're doing. If you don't have a panel down here you can just go to window and layers and show the layers palette. So we're going to start with a shape. So I'm coming across here to the shape tools. You'll probably see the rectangle tool. I've been working with custom shapes so mine's showing custom shapes. But what we're looking for is the shape that we're going to use and for me that's going to be the ellipse tool. I'm going to click on that to select it and then up here on the control bar I'm going to make sure that of these three options here that I have shape selected. That's really important. We're going to fill and we're going to select no fill at all and we're going to stroke and we're going to select black. Now if you don't see black in your recently used colors you'll be able to find it here in the grayscale options. There's black at the end of the grayscale options. So let's just go ahead now and hold down the shift key as I drag out a circle and this is going to be my cutting line. Now at the moment it is as we see a black stroke and it's 8 pixels wide. That's pretty thick. I'm thinking about half the width would be better for my size document. Yours might be a bit different depending on the size document you're working with but I'm thinking that's pretty good for my stitch lines. Now of course they don't look like stitch lines right now so to make them stitch lines we're going to with the shape still selected click on this option here. Before I do that let me just show you what's going to happen if you deselect your shape for any reason. To reselect it you can just click on it but you'll see up here that we don't have those same options. You need to go and select one of these tools down here that are sort of shape tools. So the pen tool but better still this pass selection tool. And as soon as you click on that you'll see that you get all these options back again. That's just a bit of a heads up for you. Let's go now to this icon here and here are our dashed lines. I'm just going to click on that. Now we can make the dashed lines a little bit different. For example I think it looks better when the caps are rounded. So at the moment it's square caps. So I'm going to click here and make them rounded caps. I'm also going to click on more options and that will allow me to change the way that these dashes are so I can make them longer or shorter, the actual dashes, and I can also increase or decrease this gap. So I think the gap is too small so I'm just going to make it something like about 5. I think that looks better, a wider gap. And I could make my dashes longer or shorter by just adjusting this figure. I'm just going to click OK and let's just go into the top here because this is where the overlap is going to occur. If things aren't sort of going evenly around the shape you're going to get a problem at the top here. And the top is a little bit difficult to see because as soon as you select on the shape you get this handle here. So if you zoom in you'll be able to see it a little bit better. I'm going back to this tool. I'm going back to more options and I want to work on this here. So what I'm going to do is go and click in the gap area and just press the down arrow key and that just decreases it a little bit. And you can see that these shapes are starting to pull away. So I'm just focused on here. I'm actually going to increase it because I think I'll get there more quickly. So I'm just going to click until it sort of disappears and then click again. So I'm thinking that this is the point at which it just disappears. So 502 is working just fine for me but you'll need to tweak it just a little bit so that when you click OK and then click away from the shape you'll see that there's no unevenness or no really highly visible unevenness and you don't have dashes that run into each other for example. Now for the scissors we need a shape and if you haven't got the legacy shapes added back into Photoshop this is what you're going to do. You'll go to window and then shapes. So this is the shapes panel. It's different to the one that you get when you click on custom shapes. Just be aware of that. What we're going is going to the fly out menu and we're going to legacy shapes and more and that adds in the legacy shapes. So if we click to open these you will see that you have the 2019 shapes and the all legacy default shapes. Let's click open all legacy default shapes and we're going down here to objects 
and here are the scissors. So it's just pointing out where you're going to find them. So they're going to be in the legacy shapes objects. So let's just click away from there because we want to go over here and select custom shape tool. I'm going to add a new layer because I do want my scissors on a different layer. I'm going to click the down pointing arrow here and here are the legacy shapes and more that I just added. So I'm going to all legacy default shapes. I'm going down here to objects and here is the scissors. And I want this pair of scissors, it's scissors too. So it's just gonna click on it and click away. So this is now the shape I'm working with. I'm gonna hold the shift key as I drag out my scissors. Holding the shift key just make sure that they're constrained to the correct proportion. Since I had black stroke, selected here, we're going to actually change this around. I want the fill to be black and I don't want it to have any stroke at all. So I'm just going to switch those around. Let's click away from this and see what we've got. Well, we've got our pair of scissors. I think they could be rotated slightly. So I'm going to select them and I'm going to rotate them a little bit. And then I'm just going to move them into position. I can fine tune that with just using the arrow keys the left and right arrow key. So I'm just looking for a nice place for it to sit. Now, if you're happy with that, you're done and dusted. But if you would like to see the scissors cut off where they actually are behind this line, sort of they're cut off in this area, this is what we're going to do. We're going back to the layers palette here and this is our ellipse. So this is the circle with the dashes on it. So what I'm gonna do is grab it and drop it onto a little plus sign here. So I've got two copies. So this is the one with dashes here and this, is a second version of it. Well, the second version of it, I'm going to select, make sure I have one of these tools selected that allow me to get access to these tools up here. What I'm going to do is fill this with white and I'm going to remove the stroke. So no stroke and fill with white. Well, right now, let me just fill it with blue so you can just see what's happening. So what we're doing is we're effectively creating a circle that is filled with blue, but let's go back to white because I actually want it to be white. So what we're going to do then is we're going to pull the scissors underneath it. So we're only going to see that part of the scissors that sticks out above that white circle. So you can see that it's now cut off. At this point, if you wanted to have a different background color, you could do so. So I'm selecting my background layer. I have a pale blue selected as my color, but you can double click on it and select anything you like. I'm going to the paint bucket tool. I'm just going to drop some blue color in there. So that would give you the sort of dashed cut line effect that we've come here looking for. Now you can do that with any custom shape. It doesn't have to be a circle. It can be a triangle, a hexagon, a rectangle. It can be anything that you like. So this is open to all sorts of possibilities. Just note that once you've added the legacy shapes to your shapes panel, they're going to be here every time you come in. So you don't have to repeat that step of adding the legacy shapes because Photoshop is just going to have them in the shapes panel automatically for you. If you like carefully researched content like this, clearly presented in a step-by-step -step format so that you can get great results, then you'll love my Skillshare content. I'm a Skillshare top teacher. I have hundreds of short courses on Skillshare that you can access along with thousands of other great courses, all for the price of a single subscription. If you're interested, there's a Skillshare coupon for you in the description below to use to sign up. Using this coupon benefits me as a creator and it helps me continue to make free content available here for you also on YouTube. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. On the screen now, you'll see a video that I've handpicked for you. If you enjoyed the video you've just watched, I know that you're going to really enjoy the one I've picked for you to watch next.